Police spend hours at a Lexington home after arresting the man inside for murder. We're live at the scene tracking the investigation. A Rockcastle County man dies in an early morning fire. In just 24 hours, the price for a gallon of gasoline rose by about 30 cents in Lexington. We'll tell you why coming up. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 5. Good afternoon to you. Police have made an arrest in the case of a missing woman. Paris Charles is charged with the murder and the death of his girlfriend, Goldia Massey. Parts of her remains were found in two counties last October. Police arrested Charles today at a home on Chatsworth Drive in Lexington. They are still there investigating this afternoon. Our Victor Puente is live at the scene in our top story at 5 o'clock. Victor? Well, investigators left out just about five minutes ago. If that, we watched them just pull away in the mobile crime lab. People here on Chatsworth Drive tell us the same thing. They say Paris Charles kept to himself. They also say there hasn't been any serious crime around here. So when he was arrested for murder, it was a big surprise. I didn't know what to think. And I looked down here by my house and I was like, whoa, what is going on? The people who lived near 59 year old Paris Charles say they saw detectives this morning and knew something was going to happen. I told her, I said, somebody's getting ready to get served. Lexington police arrested Charles, charging him with murder and abuse of a corpse. They say the victim was 50 year old Goldia Massey. Massey was reported missing in October. A few weeks later, body parts that were discovered in Henry and Jessamine counties were determined to belong to her. One of those neighbors said she'd seen Massey before when she came to her home asking to use the phone because she and Charles had gotten into a fight. And she was running. When she came here to use my phone, she was wanting to call the police on him. Along with that arrest warrant, detectives also served a search warrant, spending hours removing evidence from Charles's home. They also removed his two dogs. The court records show Paris Charles has multiple uh, domestic violence and alcohol related arrests, but those domestic violence arrests were not connected to Goldia Massey. Live in Lexington, Victor Puente, WKYT. A Massey's son, who first reported her missing, talked to us about that arrest. You'll hear from him on WKYT News tonight at 6 o'clock. There is a public safety alert on the Eastern Kentucky University campus this afternoon. EKU police say they received information about a threat. It implies harm may come to members of the university community on February 11th. Police are investigating. An early morning fire claimed a man's life. That fire started about 6.30 at a home on Low Gap Road in Rockcastle County. Today, we're hearing from those who knew the victim. WKYT Sam Smith shows us how he's being remembered. I'm told Morris Cromer was alone inside the house at the time of the fire, and just a few hours earlier, his brother and sister-in-law were sleeping inside. He was always willing to help anybody that he could, and do anything he could for anybody. Cromer's family lives in the area and would often check on him because they say he had health issues in his past. This morning, Cromer's brother and sister-in-law were sleeping over at his house. Cromer's sister-in-law woke up around 4.30 because she couldn't sleep. She and her husband left Cromer's home and they say around two hours later, the house was on fire. Family says Cromer did not make it out alive. They say he was 55 years old and he had a teenage daughter. This picture was the only photo of him that made it through the fire. Friends and family say Cromer was a sweet man that will be missed. Everybody in here knew him and everybody liked him and he didn't have an enemy in the world. I'm told Cox Funeral Home will handle the arrangements and those are still pending. In Rockcastle County, Sam Smith, WKYT. And right now, there is no word on the cause of the fire or Cromer's exact cause of death. Our Wednesday will start off relatively warm, but big changes moving in before the day ends. WKYT Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey's here with more on that. Chris? Yeah, getting some of those changes out there right now, Sam, with fairly uh, calm conditions. A far cry from the snow showers, windy, cold weather we had 24 hours ago. It's a better looking 
live first alert defender for folks who are getting ready to head out for a night on the town on this Tuesday evening. A lot of folks heading into downtown or uh, Lexington and Rupp Arena here in the next little bit. Live first alert defender again. Nothing that is going on up close and personal now across central Kentucky from Frankfurt into Georgetown, Lexington, and across the Richmond area. Everybody with sunshiny skies. Here's what it looks like in front of the station on Winchester Road. Beautiful big blue sky over top of us. Though we're watching a storm system that is out across the upper plains right now that has milder weather that Sam mentioned. Followed by windy weather, followed by cold weather, and a touch of snow. Literally, it's coming at us exactly how it is showing up on that map. In the short term, though, nothing to worry about as temperatures drop toward 30, if not a little below, in some of the valleys by 11 o'clock with a partly cloudy sky. Though, when I come back in a moment, we're going to track those big changes that do blow in for your Wednesday, guys. An interesting hour by hour forecast. It'll break down how quickly we go from 50 to snow on the ground. That's in less than 10 minutes. Thank you, Chris. Some drivers had sticker shock at the gas pumps today. Yeah, after hovering around $2 a gallon in the past couple of months, gas prices jumped to $2.39 a gallon at some Lexington stations. WKYT's Mike Linden shows us the reason for the steep and sudden increase. The story is new at 5. According to AAA, gas prices are increasing for the first time since September, but it's nothing to panic over. It's normal for this time of year because refineries shut down. For maintenance and also to prepare for the summer blends of gasoline every spring. So when they're shut down, their, their output is decreased somewhat. Despite the 30 cent on average increase for a gallon of gas in Kentucky today, the state still is only about three cents over the national average for a gallon of gas at about two dollars and nine cents. For some commuters, even a small increase can mean big bucks over a year. I'm a salesperson, and so I have to have gas for work, and I pay for my own gas. So when gas is less expensive, it saves me about $100 a month. Despite the increase, gas prices are still down from the highest recorded price of $4.25 in 2008 and are also down by more than a dollar than this time last year. A year ago, to fill this vehicle up was $110, $115 when it was low. This morning it was low, and I filled up and it was $42. According to AAA, gas prices have increased over the past five years during the month of February and could continue to increase into the middle of spring before leveling out. In Lexington, Mike Linden, WKYT. And remember, you can always look up the cheapest gas prices in your area. Just visit WKYT.com. We are tracking a burglary investigation in Lexington. Police say a man broke into a home on Abbey Wood Road around 10 this morning. We're told a neighbor saw what happened, wrote down the man's license plate number, and called 911. Police say they made contact with the suspect on Grace Drive, but at this point, no one has been arrested or charged. It was an unusual crime. Police say a man shot an arrow at a house full of people. Berea police tell us that Jesse White fired the arrow early yesterday morning at a home on Center Street. Four people were inside at the time. Police say White admitted to shooting the arrow from a wooded area nearby. He is charged with four counts of wanton endangerment. A crash injured three adults and a child. Our county by county coverage begins or continues in Whitley County. The sheriff's office says Adam McKitty swerved to avoid a vehicle backing out of a driveway in U.S. 25 West yesterday afternoon. His pickup ended up in the other lane, hitting Elizabeth Rainwater's car head on. McKitty, Rainwater, another adult, and a juvenile were all taken to Jellicoe Community Hospital for treatment. The Wildcats returning to the court at Rupp Arena tonight. The game is just a couple of hours away, so fans have already started arriving down at Wildcat Central. WKYT's Rob Bromley is live there with a preview of tonight's matchup. Hello, Rob. Hello, and welcome back in once again to Wildcat Central, where the fans are now driving in droves to see Kentucky against Georgia. Come down and see us here at Wildcat Central. You can get a free collectible for tonight's game at the Kentucky Branded Store, which is right next door. Cats and the Dogs, first of two meetings between these two teams this season. They will play again down in Athens the first week of March. And like every other team, Georgia will come in here tonight thinking, upset. Kentucky now stands alone as the only undefeated team in the country. Georgia's played well, winning five of eight conference games, and the Cats know they will have to be ready. 
I mean, everybody's going to come in, you know, with that mentality of giving us our best game. So we just have to, you know, just compete at a high level. We can't get complacent, you know. Um, we're just trying to get ourselves better each and every day. So, um, you know, that's how you do it. You know, we just try to go hard. We don't even focus on the undefeated talk or anything. We just, um, you know, focus on getting our team better. Just a short time ago that uh, Trey Lyles will not be playing tonight, and that was certainly expected. Hopefully he will be back soon, but he has been sick. 7 o'clock tip-off on ESPNU tonight for Kentucky and Georgia. I will be back with much more coming up in sports. We'll hear from assistant Barry Rorson, who talks about the focus on this team and how the veterans on this team have kept things in focus ever since early on, ever since this season all got started. That's it now from here at Wildcat Central. Sam Amber, back to you. All right, Rob, we'll see you in just a bit. The Cats' next game is Saturday when they travel to Florida. Follow WKYT online at WKYT.com. Join the conversation on Twitter and become a part of the WKYT Facebook family. For years, veterans groups have been sounding the alarm about the shocking rates of suicides among those who have served. And today, Congress approved legislation to provide critical mental health care and screening for military members. Craig Boswell introduces us to the veterans who were the driving force behind this bill. This is what veterans groups have been fighting for. It is a historic day. It's a unifying day, and it's something that all veterans should be proud of. The Senate unanimously approved a bill to help prevent veteran suicides. Our veterans all too often succumb to the invisible wounds and inner demons that come home with them. We have a lot of young men who haven't been able to come all the way home. The bill is named in honor of Clay Hunt, a Marine Corps sniper who killed himself in 2011. The legislation creates a one-stop website for veterans looking for help and addresses the shortage of mental health care professionals who treat veterans. We're losing 22 veterans a day. It's more than just a veterans issue. It's a public health crisis. Paul Rykoff, CEO of the Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America, spearheaded the effort to pass the legislation. I did not think it would take this long. Last March, veterans placed 1,800 American flags on the National Mall, each representing a military suicide, an effort to push Congress to act. But he warns this is just the first step. We know that there are going to be others, but we hope that this will be reinforcements. This will give us the means and the bullets and the cavalry uh, to try to save lives. The House passed the bill last month, and it now goes to the White House for President Obama's signature. Craig Boswell, CBS News, Washington. And this year's bill orders the VA to find the money in its $160 billion budget. Opening statements have started now in the trial of a Kentucky woman accused of poisoning her young son to death. Prosecutors say that Lacey Spears repeatedly gave her son salt through a feeding tube in order to make him sick and get attention. The five-year-old died in New York last January. Spears moved to Scottsville in Allen County after his death. Her attorney says there are no witnesses or direct evidence in the case. Boston is digging out again after a second snowstorm in about a week. The city has received more than 34 inches of snow in seven days, making it the snowiest week the city has ever recorded. People who live there are trying to stay positive. One shovel at a time. You can't really think about the big job. You just do one shovel at a time till it's gone. Well, the city is busy preparing a two-mile route for a parade tomorrow honoring the New England Patriots and their Super Bowl win. It had to be postponed one day because of the weather. Think about this the next time you have to walk just a block or two. Thanks to the generosity of other people, the commute to work is about to get a lot shorter for one man from Michigan. James Robertson began walking to work 10 years ago when his car died. And buses don't cover his whole route, so he has to walk about 21 miles round trip. He has not missed a day of work in 12 years. How I do the job, that's when the real battles won. A college student saw Robertson's story in the Detroit Free Press and started a GoFundMe page for him. The online effort raised $150,000. Robertson will use some of the money, he says, to buy a new car, but he says he needs to research models and the insurance first.